Hey PA junkies, happy Wednesday. I am so refreshed and so rejuvenated because if you follow me on social media, you probably know I recently got back from a trip to Key West that I just decided to go on very randomly and very last minute because I needed a break. <sighs> Needless to say, it was amazing, but I'm such a hot mess right now and nothing in my life is together. Everything is kind of like scattered all over the place, including this desk over here. I recently bought one of those elevated desks that you can move up and down and a walking pad because I saw this video on TikTok from this girl who talks all about her walking pad. Literally has millions of followers based on her making videos about her walking pad and how much it's supported her health since the pandemic. And it's just, I decided I had to get one. So we're at that level. And next time you see me, I'll be on my walking pad. It's still a work in progress. So stay tuned for that. Anyway, if you're new here, my name's Kat. I post videos all about my native Commonwealth, Pennsylvania, which might seem boring to you, but it's actually the most fascinating thing in the world to me and to many of you who watch my videos. Thank you guys so much for your endless support. I appreciate you. I love you dearly. And excuse my nails. <laughs> I ripped them all off yesterday in anxiety mode because I'm so delayed with content since I've been away. Anyway, if you guys haven't subscribed here on YouTube and you're interested in all the PA creepy stories from PA Paranormal to PA Legends, please do me a favor and subscribe here to my channel. I appreciate it so much. I have had so many creepy PA stories submitted by PA junkies from all over the Commonwealth and they are wild. And today's story I am so excited about because it's in an area in PA that I love so much that I recently visited for the second time in my life, not that long ago. And it's based in a place in that particular town that I've wanted to go to for so long and I still haven't made it to yet, but we're gonna live vicariously through this person's story today. It's so good. So without further ado, let's get into today's creepy PA story submitted by Ronnie from New Florence, PA. For those unfamiliar, New Florence is out in the Western region of the state. In this story, Ronnie talks about a trip she made to Gettysburg, one of my favorite areas. It's adorable and so full of history as we know. Ronnie went to Gettysburg with her mom to the infamous Jenny Wade House. The Jenny Wade House is one of the most haunted buildings in Gettysburg. And Ronnie's story is proof that there's some crazy shit going on there. I mentioned earlier that I went to Gettysburg, which was actually last year. It feels like it was yesterday. Time moves so quickly as we age. But I went to Gettysburg last year and I visited the Seminary Ridge Museum, which was amazing. Shout out to Rob, who was my tour guide the whole day. <laughs> he was awesome. He is awesome. He showed me the ropes. He taught me all about the history. It was amazing. One of the things that was brought up later on in the day was the Jenny Wade House. And this was brought up when I went to grab a bite to eat at the Dobbin House Tavern, which I've actually shared about on my TikTok account. If you haven't seen that video, go check it out. You might have to scroll through a good bit of videos to find it. But I had the best experience at the Dobbin House Tavern. It was not only delicious, French onion soup, highly recommended by the way. I'm not even a French onion soup fan. It's amazing. But I had the best conversation with the couple sitting next to me who had moved from Jim Thorpe to Gettysburg and they were so elated about this move. They love Gettysburg so much. They were like, this is the best move we could have made. And they love the history. And one of the things they brought up specifically was their experience at the Jenny Wade house. And oh my goodness, it sent chills up and down my spine. I'll talk about their story in a little bit after I share Ronnie's, but man, you, you guys are just brace yourselves. This is crazy stuff. All right, let's get into Ronnie's story. This is what she shares with us. This story is about my mom and me. We were visiting Gettysburg for the first time. We took the bus tour and then we stopped at the Jenny Wade house. We walked through the house and we made it upstairs to the first room, which had kids toys in it and a chain across the toys so people wouldn't touch them. We made it to the next room and the chain that was hooked to the wall in that room flew across the room towards the stairs. I got a picture of a weird light in that room just after that, and there should have absolutely been no light in that room at the time. I didn't realize I got this picture until later on either. No one touched that chain, by the way, or was in that room other than us. We went through the upstairs and then went downstairs to the other side of the house. We walked into the kitchen to the next room, and we were looking at relics in one of the china cabinets. I've actually heard about the china cabinets before. That couple at the Dobbin House Tavern told me about this, so I was like, ooh, can't wait to hear about this. My mom was taking pictures of some of the relics and someone told her not to take a picture. So she didn't take the picture. And then when she turned around, she saw a guy she didn't know. She turned back around, then looked back again, and the guy was gone. As we walked out of the house, 
we saw a picture on the wall of a man. My mom said that was the guy who told her not to take the picture earlier. The guy in the picture was Jenny Wade's boyfriend. It was a really weird experience. Can you imagine casually strolling through the Jenny Wade house and Jenny Wade's dead boyfriend just comes up to you and says, please don't take any pictures? <laughs> like, <laughs> sir, where did you come from? Ronnie also shared another experience and I'm just gonna share it here because it's still Gettysburg related. Ronnie says, we had another experience on top of Little Round Top with cameras that quit working and my phone battery and backup battery was drained. We got back to the hotel and my phone came on at 50%. The backup battery was fully charged and my mom's camera still wouldn't work, even to this day. This stuff happens a lot when it comes to spirits. Spirits will toy around with the energy because honestly, we are all energy, whether we're in spirit form or human form, that's just, the name of the game here. It makes all the sense that lights flicker, things fall off the shelves. They can manipulate what's here in this physical lifetime. So the fact that the battery was drained, lights go out. I watch a lot of paranormal videos too on YouTube and this stuff happens all the time when it comes to being in the presence of spirits who have crossed over or at least are kind of in that purgatory where they're maybe lost and they don't realize they're dead. And look, I know there are more of you than not who try to make sense of this stuff? And are there things that we can make sense in this physical reality that aren't spiritual activity? Yeah, of course. But I also am of the unpopular delusional opinion that these ghostly encounters are 100% real because I personally have heard, felt, and even seen in some cases way too many spirits to think otherwise. I have friends who can see full-blown apparitions and the only reason I've been able to channel this is because I've been open to it in the past. I actually don't prefer to channel the whole psychic ability thing because it just, I don't like it. It makes me really uncomfortable. It gives me a lot of anxiety and I don't wanna invite that into my world no matter how kind the spirit is. It just freaks me out. I have enough anxiety as it is. It's like no hard feelings, but you gotta go because I, I can't deal with it. But my one friend cannot help but see her late grandfather. She sees full blown apparitions. I mean, it's crazy. And everybody sees spirit differently. So you can't really put people in one category of how they view life in this human form or how they view spirit life. It just doesn't work that way. So I think this is completely real. I'm gonna share some things with you guys too that's just absolutely wild that I found online about other people's experiences. Crazy. Can some experiences be completely explainable as to what's happening here in the physical realm? Yes, absolutely, 1000% for sure. But energy doesn't lie. And if you feel like you just encountered an incident with the spirit, you probably did. So I think it's just easy for us to try to rationalize everything, but oh my gosh, I 1000% believe in this stuff. I've also been working with a psychic medium in Jersey for over 10 years now, and she has connected with people in my life who have crossed over and shared with me things that absolutely no one on the planet, and I'm talking like extremely specific, life situations for those people when they were in their human life. Like nobody else would know these things. And the fact that Patty's able to share those with me is like, never would anyone know that. I've never even shared that on my personal accounts online. Like there's nowhere you can find that information. It's, it's absolutely wild. And I don't have to sit here and justify all of this. You believe what you believe. I believe what I believe, but I mean, <laughs> There's too much evidence for me. All that said, I know I went on a little spiritual rampage there, so bear with me, but let's get back to the Jenny Wade house. So look, here's the dealio on Ms. Jenny Wade of Gettysburg, PA. Jenny's name was actually Mary Virginia Wade, but she went by Jenny to her friends and posse. Again, the Jenny Wade house is one of the most haunted buildings in Gettysburg with a unique and pretty tragic history. As we already know, the house was named after Jenny Wade who lived there during the American Civil War. On July 1st, 1863, the Battle of Gettysburg began and basically the entire town was turned into a battlefield. Despite the dangers of this battle breaking out, Jenny remained in her home with her mom and her sister. On the morning of July 3rd, 1863, just a couple of days after battle broke out, Jenny was in the kitchen of her home kneading dough to make bread for the Union soldiers. Out of nowhere, she was struck by a bullet and killed instantly in her own home. I think the bullet came through the window. Please don't quote me on that. I can't remember exactly, but I'm pretty sure that's how it went down. It was 
So tragic. Jenny was only 20 years old at the time she died. The Jenny Wade house has since become a museum that people can go to Gettysburg and visit and walk through just like Ronnie did with their mom. And there is so much paranormal activity there as we know, which is why it's known as one of the most haunted buildings in Gettysburg. Visitors at the Jenny Wade house have reported hearing unexplained footsteps, voices, feeling cold spots in random areas of the home. Some have even reported seeing ghostly apparitions. One of the most well-known ghosts at the Jenny Wade house, not surprisingly enough, is Jenny Wade herself. Many visitors have claimed to see the spirit of Jenny Wade, or at least who they believe to be Jenny Wade, in the kitchen of her home where she was killed. And some have even reported smelling the aroma of freshly baked bread. Like, as if Jenny is still baking for the soldiers. And that whole thing during my research was so eerie to read about. People having that common experience of smelling freshly baked bread at the Jenny Wade house when they spent the night. Because remember the couple I told you I talked to at the Dobbin House Tavern last year? They said the exact same thing. They said they were literally pulled out of their slumber at like three in the morning and they have never smelled such a strong smell of like freshly baked delicious bread. And they were like, is someone baking bread in the house right now? No one was there. Like it was just the guests. Obviously no one would be making bread at three in the morning at the Jenny Wade house. <laughs> but knowing that so many people have that shared experience is pretty wild. Another ghostly presence that's been reported at the Jenny Wade house is that of a Confederate soldier. Legend has it that he was shot and killed on the property and his spirit remains there to this day. Visitors have reported seeing him in various parts of the house and have reported even being touched by him. So look, there's obviously a lot of shared experiences when it comes to the Jenny Wade house. Another specific incident that couple at the Dobbin House Tavern mentioned to me, which is also haunted by the way, super haunted, was about the kids' toys and like hearing giggles and just feeling the presence of a child and having toys tinkered around with and little toys moving across the room. Super, super spooky stuff. And I don't know what it is, and I know I've mentioned this before, but just the death of a child is so sad to me to begin with. And then having their spirit try and communicate in this physical realm is just, it's so heartbreaking to me. So I know we have Ronnie's story. I know we have the couple at the Dobbin House Tavern that I spoke with and we have their stories, but I just had to go to Reddit because I was like, I need to know if anybody else is saying these things. And I got more than I bargained for with this one story that came up like instantly. And you can Google this yourselves, but this person shared a picture and they titled it, picture I took at the Jenny Wade in Gettysburg, PA in 2012. No one was behind me at the time and I still can't explain it. There are over two dozen comments on this Reddit post and some people really trying to make sense of this picture. <laughs> Like I said, really trying to rationalize what's going on. And I'm gonna show you the picture here and you guys can tell me what you think. You can pause it, whatever you need to do, zoom on in. But I'm telling you right now, <laughs> this, is, this is really, really, really weird. Like I saw that and I was like, that is, that's a ghost. Like there's no doubt in my mind. Maybe I'm of the delusional opinion, but I don't know, you tell me what you think in the comments. So this one person commented on the Reddit post and I was trying really hard to understand what they were saying because I'm like, of course, some of these things can really be explained. And as I was trying to like piece what they were saying together, I still just could not make sense of this picture. Like it just didn't make any sense to me. So they said, if you look at the length of the curtain next to it, you can match up the bottoms. It looks like the bottom of a t-shirt, but it's really the bottom of the curtain. The shoulder area could be a wave in the curtain. The arm is just your arm doubled on the bend in the mirror design. Now that part, when I looked really closely, I could understand what they were saying, but then they ended their comment with, as for the hair slash head, well, that's just a floating head. Which <laughs> like, it absolutely is. It looks like in this picture, there is someone standing behind this person who posted it, just looking into the mirror with them. It is it is so creepy. I would probably collapse if I saw that. I really, really would. It's, it's insane. I also wanna say this, this person made it pretty clear that they were not doing any kind of Photoshop. They didn't even know how to do Photoshop. This was also back in 2012. And I don't think people were as privy to doing Photoshop things, at least just the average person who wasn't doing that for a living. Like it wasn't just something a lot of people were doing. I was at Penn State at the time studying journalism and I wasn't even doing that kind of stuff. Someone else said, 
I'm all about convincing evidence, but this seriously just looks like someone's walking behind you, even though you claim no one was behind you. Totally solid figure, which looks to be wearing a white t-shirt and maybe khaki colored pants. I'd be more convinced if you had a series of shots back to back than just one pick. And this person who originally posted it said, yeah, I wish that were the case as well. I'm sure everyone on this subreddit takes everything with a grain of salt, seeing as though finding a ghost slash spirit in a picture is a difficult task. I've just been holding on to this picture for years and recently started browsing Reddit and figured I would make an account to see what everyone else's opinion was. If it's any consolation, I'm 100% positive. No one was behind me when I took the photo. I understand the hesitation though. And this is what I am saying. Like I can understand everybody trying to rationalize this stuff, but I think there's way too much history in that house as we know now. Um, some of you might've already known this, but there's just way too much history in that house. I definitely think there was a spirit behind this person in that picture. It's, it's just too, it doesn't make any sense and you can't make sense of it. It's just somebody who is hanging out in this physical realm. And then of course you have people on Reddit, like there's somebody who said, I would say it's fake, but Gettysburg is definitely haunted. I mean, that's another thing to take into account. There were so many casualties in Gettysburg back in that time. And it just would not surprise me at all if you went to Gettysburg one day and you felt something a little strange. Wouldn't surprise me at all. But this is one of the reasons I love Gettysburg so much. As much as I don't wanna invite that into my world, if there's anywhere in PA I'm gonna feel that and be open to feeling it, it's probably gonna be Gettysburg because you can't escape it really. I'm trying to see this because someone else commented and said on this picture that I'm positive that someone's sitting on like drawers behind you or like a bench behind you. I just, this person is blatantly saying, I, there's no one behind me. There was no one there behind me at that time that picture was taken. I don't know. What do you guys think? <laughs> it's so crazy, man. I'm gonna leave this to you guys. If you've been to the Jenny Wade house, please leave your experiences in the comments. I have not been there yet and I'm dying to get there, no pun intended. I would love to experience it at least once in my life, but also would I, would I really want to? I Maybe not, I don't know. I don't know, I think I would. But you guys let me know what you've experienced at the Jenny Wade house and what also you've experienced in Gettysburg in general, because there is so much going on there. When I was visiting the Seminary Ridge Museum last year, I was there taking videos and pictures and I just remember being in that watchtower looking over where the battlefield once was and it was just so peaceful like oddly enough and ironically enough, it was so incredibly peaceful. So if you ever get out to the Seminary Ridge Museum and you go up on that watchtower, you can kind of get like this 360 view, which is where they stood during the battle. It's, it's just very quiet. And I didn't feel anything negative either. It's, it's really odd. I thought I would feel like a ton of sadness, but I felt a lot of peace, very odd. Oh man, you guys. And before I go, let me just give a little shout out to Ronnie. Ronnie, thank you so much for sharing your experience and your story with us. It was one for the books, man. It was amazing. Again, if you guys love hanging with me here on YouTube and you love all the creepy PA things, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell to be notified for future videos that air here on my channel every Wednesday. As always, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.